distant. Just as man is destined to die once and after that face judgment. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people. And he will appear again a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Now this is the word of God tonight. And the word of God says here, just as man is destined to die once and after that face judgment. And I want to ask every man and woman in this room tonight a question. Where do you think you're going to go? When you die. I want you to think about that for a second. Where do you think you're going to go? Now, these are some of the things that's been put to me in the past. Some will say, I'm going to heaven. Some would say, I'm going to hell. And some others will turn around and say, when you're dead, you're dead. There's nothing. Well, that's your opinion and you're entitled to that. But I want to tell you tonight what the Word of God says. You see, the Bible says here that just as a man is destined to die once, every man, every woman is destined to die. Every one of us has a destiny. And that is one day we will breathe our last. Each and every one of us, one day we will breathe our last. If we live to an old age, a young age, whatever age you'll be, one day you will breathe your last. And whatever conclusion you come up with, it's contradicted straight away to what the Bible says. Because the Bible says when you die, you will face judgment. That's what the Word of God says, that you will face judgment. That you will have to stand before a holy and righteous God and give an account for your life. Now you might be one of these people tonight that says, I'm okay because I'm going to heaven. Well, the Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it will lead you to death. And that death is shut out forever from the presence of the Almighty God. You might be the person tonight who turns around and says, you know, I, I don't believe I've got heaven, I believe I'm going straight to hell, but when I go there, I'm going to be having a game of cards and we're going to be having a party, and it's going to be a good time. Well, let me tell you something tonight, my friend. The Bible says that hell is a place of torment and torture. The Bible says that hell is a place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's a place where the worm never dies, the Bible says. A place of outer darkness, a place of complete and utter torment for all eternity. For the next person who may be thinking tonight in this room that there is no God, there's no such thing as nothing, or heaven or hell, when I die I'm just cease to exist. Well, the Bible says that if anyone thinks that God isn't real, they're a fool. Now, looking at my people here tonight, I don't class us as fools. But we can be misled. You see, the Bible tells us here, friends, there's something that we have, something in our lives that has separated you and me from God. And that is your sins and mine. And our sins have separated us from God. Now, everybody looks at sins, especially amongst our people, as that's a dirty word. How could you say that I'm a sinner? Well, let me tell you something. The Bible says that all wrongdoing is sin. So wherever you've done wrong before God, that is a sin. And that sin separated you and me from God. The Bible says that there has to be a punishment. Sin has to be punished. If somebody went to a court of law and they've done something wrong, they would get punished for it, wouldn't they? There's an old saying, let the punishment fit the crime. We would actually get punished. We may get a good lawyer. We may get the best barristers who is that money can buy. But let me tell you something. No matter how much money you pay, you and I know within our hearts whether we're guilty or we're innocent. And let me tell you something. We are all guilty of sin. Amen. How do I know that? Am I being judgmental of you tonight? Not at all. The Bible tells me in Romans 3.23 that we have all sinned and we have fallen short of God's glory. That means every one of us, the Bible says there is no one that does that is righteous, not even one. So we can't put ourselves in a category tonight that we're okay. Because the truth of it is, you're not. But I want to speak to your heart tonight. You already know this, don't you? I already know this. We already know that we're not right. 
Do you know why we know that we're not right? Because we're making a million, million excuses trying to prove ourselves right. Within our own hearts, we know full well that they're not good enough. So now we've got a problem. Now we've got a big problem. Because the Bible says that when we breathe our last, we're going to stand before God. We're going to get judged. We're going to get found guilty because that's what we are. We are guilty. And the Bible says that we will be punished for our sins. And the Bible says the wages of your sin is death. Shut out forever from the presence of God. So, okay, what do we do? Can I buy my way in it? Is that an option I can have? Can I maybe get enough money to buy my way into heaven? No. You can't buy your way to heaven. The Bible says, let me tell you why you can't buy your way into heaven with money. The Bible says, yeah, that the payment of sin is death. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So, if you have to shed blood, then your money's no good, obviously, is it? Now, I can shed my blood, maybe you can shed yours, but there's a problem with me and you shedding our blood. Our blood is stained with sin. So now we really are stupid, don't we? We, are, we, we really are in the jam. <coughs> now everybody's here. Everybody's here at this place of hell. Everybody's here at this place of torment. How long does it last for? It is for eternity. It is for all eternity. There is no getting out. Once you're there, you are there. Let me tell you something that you don't know, yeah? The devil don't hold you there. The devil don't hold you and torture you in hell. We put ourselves there. We sentenced ourselves there. Yeah? And it's God who does the torturing, not the devil. The devil is being tortured just like we are. What are we going to do? Well, I think it's the 13th today. Friday the 13th, that was your bad news. Now I'll give you some good news. In a couple of weeks, we're going to be opening Christmas presents up and everybody's going to be having a good time. Because it's Christmas. Now face value, Christmas is Father Christmas. But deep down in our hearts, we know what Christmas is about, don't we? Who knows in here tonight that we celebrate Christmas as the birth of Christ? Amen. Who celebrates that tonight? Because that's what we do. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. According to history, which is wrong, Jesus was born on the 25th of December. And we celebrate it at that time of year as the birth of Christ. In the book of Luke, in Luke's Gospel, John the Baptist looks up to his disciples and he says, Behold the Lamb of God Amen. who takes away the sins of the world. You, now everybody thinks and everybody knows this story that Jesus was somewhere around the age of 30 years. He was in Jerusalem. He was preaching good because he was a good person. He preached to people and bad people and nailed them to the cross and he was crucified. We all know the story of the Easter. We all know the story of Christmas. We all know the story of Jesus when he was crucified. I want to ask you a question tonight, each and every person under the sound of my voice. I want you to ask yourself a question. Why did he die? Why did he die? I'll tell you why he died. Because only Jesus could pay the penalty for your sins and for mine. You all know the story. Jesus came in Matthew's Gospel. In Matthew 4, 17 it says, From that time on Jesus began to preach. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And friend, I want to tell you something. The same story, the same message has been preached from 2,000 years ago to this very night as I'm stood behind this pulpit. If you want to be forgiven, if you want to go to heaven, you have to repent. Repent for what? Repent from your sins. Now repentance isn't feeling sorry for your sins. Repentance is an action. Where we stop doing what we're doing and we turn away from our sins and we turn to Jesus Christ. 
Why should we turn to Jesus Christ? Because it was Jesus Christ who shed his blood for you on the cross at Calvary. That's why you turn to Jesus. The Bible tells us that Jesus was mocked, beat, spat upon, and he was nailed to a cross. You all know the story. I'm not going to go into detail. Please, if you want more detail, come and see me after the meeting. Come and see some of the brothers and we'll show you. But I want to tell you something. Jesus was the only man born who remained sinless. Amen. He did not sin. Jesus was the only man born who chose to go to that cross to pay the penalty for you and for me. The Bible says that they nailed Jesus to the cross in, Cal in Calvary. And while he was at the cross, <coughs> there are two types of people at this cross watching him. Like this audience is here tonight, looking up at Jesus and looking at two, two uh, criminals. There was one criminal hurling insults at Jesus. If you're the son of God, get us down from here. If you're the son of God, do this. If you're the son of God, do that. And I want to tell you something. There's many people in this room tonight who will be saying the same thing. If God was so good, why don't he do this? If God was so good, why don't he do that? Questioning the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There was another man on the other side of Jesus. And he looked up to this other criminal and he said to him, he said, why are you saying this? He said, we have been just judged justly and we are getting what our deeds deserve. He said, but this man has done no wrong. He recognized who Jesus was. And he said to him, Jesus, remember me to, uh, when you go into your father's kingdom. He recognized who Jesus was. He recognized that he, would, he needed the Savior. And the Bible says that Jesus turned around to this man and he said, today you will be with me in paradise. But I want to ask you again another question. Are you going to be with Jesus in paradise? Or are you still going to stick to it your way? Or I'll do it later. Or I'm okay as I am. When everything in the word of God contradicts what you and me say. The Bible says that Jesus hung on that cross. And he died. He died on that cross. They put a spear in his side and blood flowed in water. And he did that for you and for me. He paid the price. The price was acceptable to God the Father. And Jesus paid the price for him. He died on that cross. The Bible says that Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus took him and they laid him in a new tomb. They buried him. They put the linen cloth on him and they buried him in the tomb. That was it. Done and dusted. Everybody went back to their normal life. But guess what? It wasn't over there. Because the Bible says that three days later, God the Father raised Jesus to life. And I want to tell you something tonight. If you really knew, if you really knew what that meant, this roof wouldn't last on this building. You'd blow it off, would you? Hallelujah. Because I want to tell you something. If Jesus didn't raise from the dead, you and me couldn't be saved. Amen. But through his death, his burial, and his resurrection, we can have new life. Amen. And that life is only found in Christ Jesus. Amen. Friend, I want to tell you something tonight. You need to repent. You have to repent of your sins. Yes, the world may taste good. Yes, the world may look good. But let me tell you where the world will take you. Straight to the pits of hell. You need to repent of your sin. And you need to come to Jesus Christ. You need to acknowledge him that he's right and that you're wrong. You have to come before him and say, God, I am a sinner. And I need your forgiveness. Amen. People think today, and especially amongst our people, amongst gypsy and traveling people, we think because Jesus done something, that covers us automatically. No, it don't, my friend. It don't cover us automatically. You have to repent. You have to do something. The question is, what are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? You've got two choices. You can either accept him or you can reject him. And that choice is down to you tonight. We always proclaim and profess that we're clever people. That we know what we're doing. And I believe that to be true. 
I don't believe we're fools. But if you know what was good for you tonight, you'd be willing to this front to say, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Let me tell you something. I'm not calling anyone a fool in this place tonight, but only a fool would want to go to hell. But if you want to come to Jesus, you have to do something. This is what you have to do. I'm going to close now and ask the brother to come back up. This is what you have to do. You see all these people that sat beside you? You have to forget them. Because I'm going to tell you somebody, something. Not one of them can save you. Amen. Not one of them can save me. Amen. You have to get up out of your chair. And you have to walk to this front. If anybody's in your way, say move. I need to surrender my life to God. I'm not talking to you about making a decision for God. Stop swapping one religion for another religion. Let me tell you something what happens to you. Yeah? When you repent of your sins and you meet with God, your life will never be the same again. God changes you. Not on the outside, he changes you from within. He said, you are born again of my spirit. God gives us a new heart and he puts in a new spirit within us. Friend, do you want to be forgiven tonight? I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. Jesus wants to forgive you. He wants to forgive you, but you have to repent. Have you made a decision for God and you never lasted five minutes? Let me tell you something. You never met with him. Because anyone who meets with Jesus is never the same again. Amen. You will never be the same again. I don't mean to offend you, but the word of the God is the truth. And I am sick, tired and fed up of seeing so many of our people falling by the wayside. Let me tell you something. If you haven't had a relationship with God, you've never met God. Jesus said, unless you become converted, you can have no part in it. So friend, I want to ask you tonight, man, woman, young and old, forget the food, forget what we're doing in this meeting, Right now is the most important decision you will ever make in your life. Please come to the front. There's ministers here. And we will lead you to Jesus. If you've got any questions, don't be large. We're not, we're not a large people. We're the wrong race of people for that. We know how to go and knock on a door. We know how to go and charm people. We know how to go and do things. We know how to sell. We know how to, we know how to buy. We know how to deal. We're not large when it comes to a few pounds. Don't be lashed with your soul. Come and surrender your life to Jesus tonight before it's too late. God bless you.